Hey everybody and welcome back to Art a la Carte. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a horse head and this time I'm going to have it looking at a three quarters angle towards you. So first I'm going to start off with some guidelines and the first guideline I'm going to do is the line that will run from the top of the horse's head all the way down straight through the eyes down to the nose. And it's going to be kind of at an angle, just a little bit, just like that. So it's a nice straight line. And then I'm going to put my next line is the line that runs between the two eyes. And this is going to make kind of a cross shape. But this is the first step. You want to start with this nice little cross shape. Now you can do what, what I call a kite, which you can kind of connect those lines in just a little bit. And it's going to help you to kind of see a little bit more of this horse shape of this horse head. So on this top part is the kind of the cheek area of the horse coming down towards the muzzle of the horse. So as it comes down here towards the end of the kite shape, I'm going to put a circle shape for the actual muzzle. Back up here between the two eyes, I'm going to put another larger circle shape, which is going to connect between those two lines right there. Now a lot of people ask me, how do I get these circles? How, do I be, how am I able to draw really great circles? And you'll notice what I'm drawing, I, I go around it several times really lightly and then I can go and pick the line that I like. Okay, so I have two circles, the cheek area and the muzzle area. So I know my eyes are going to be right in here, so I'm just going to lay in some circles here for the eyes. Boom, boom, just like that. And as it comes up between the eyes of the horse is the pole or the top of the head of the horse. So I'm going to put a little bit right there. And then I can go ahead and put my arch for the ear. So here's the pole or the top of my horse's head. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to draw an arch for the horse's ears. Now you can draw it straight up if your horse is looking um, straight up at you. This horse is looking down a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually put my arch a little bit lower. It's not going to reach as high. Right, I'm going to go ahead and put in the shape there. I'm going to wrap that around there for my ears. It's kind of more of an Arabian head. So they have just these, those gorgeous ears that kind of tip up towards the center. And you kind of see them kind of coming back to the back of the horse's head. And again, I'm drawing really lightly. So later on, if this doesn't look right, you can go back and totally fix it up however you need to. All right, now I'm going to begin working on the outline of my horse's head. So I have my ears. I'm going to bring this down towards the eye. And as it gets to the eye, it's, the skull of the horse is actually going to kind of bump out just a little bit. So it has that kind of ridge on the horse's skull. And it's going to come down underneath here. And here it comes with the skull. And it's going to kind of come in from the cheekbone. Now there's also this bone, this, this front part of the horse's head here. I'm going to move that line over just a little bit. It's going to come down from this horse eye, this, this bone ridge here, the eye socket. It's going to come down straight down. So this horse cheek kind of wraps in and around. It's going under here. This is the back jaw of the horse. So this bone kind of wraps in and underneath. And then the front front of the face of the horse kind of moves in over top of that. We have that same kind of bone right up here. I'm going to gesture that in just a little bit. And then I have just that cheek, that jaw bone right down here coming down. And then it wraps in towards the underside of my horse's face. And then the actual mouth of the horse is coming down. And then it's going to go into the, into the nose. Now as we get to the nose, there's not as much bone down here because the skull kind of comes in and, and ends up here. So there's lots of uh, tissue and, and it's just very soft. So it's going to kind of come up for the nostrils a little bit and come down into the muzzle, back around for the lips. And you don't see a lot of the bottom lip there, it kind of just tucks in underneath there. I'm just going to go ahead and just put in some shape marks of where I want the nostrils to be. Okay, now that you have your shape, you really want to look at your drawing and just kind of determine it because now you're starting to 
you're going to want to start erasing your lines and making sure that things are, are right where you want them. If you want to bring some lines out, go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring this, this face line out just a little bit to find out my cheek a little bit. Bring down my eye just a wee bit. This is why you draw really, really lightly. As you set up these drawings, then you can really begin to see, okay, is this what I want my horse to look like? And I want to kind of narrow out this muzzle just a little bit. Once you have this kind of figured out where you want, you can also go back through with your eraser and just begin erasing out those lines that you don't need anymore. All right, once you have the shape down that you like, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the neck. And actually, I'm having this horse kind of arch its neck, so I'm actually going to have its neck come up a little bit and down. So you're going to actually see the neck is actually higher than the horse's head. And again, I'm drawing really lightly, so if I need to, I can erase. I'm going to bring in the bottom part of my neck down here. Alright, so I have my neck and my horse head outlined the way I want to. So let's look at the eyes. Alright, so as you can see, I've kind of already sketched them in a little bit. And I have a couple of videos on my channel on how to draw horse eyes. But really the eye ridge up here is going to kind of come up to a point and then come down. And then the underside of the eye just sweeps around in kind of this really gentle circle coming into the, the tear duct, which is at the corner of the eye. So you want to kind of play with that just a little bit. And a lot of times you won't see a lot of color in the horse's eyes. When you look at you know, people eyes, at human eyes, you're going to see the iris and the pupil and the whites. With the horse's eyes, generally their eyes are really dark. You might see a little bit of brown, um, but not a lot of color. What you will see is some highlights. So what I'm going to do to get a really good highlight in there is I'm actually going to sketch in where I want those rims of light to be. It's right there. And then I'm just going to very lightly go over with my pencil and just shade those in. I'm actually going to skip into a darker lead pencil. This one's a 5B. And I'm going to start in and just really pushing in some dark colors, but only in the places that I want it to be really black. I find I like to start adding detail into the eyes first because it just really makes my drawing come alive. And I don't know, gives me hope that there's hope for this drawing when I'm drawing things. If I can get the eyes to look like there's life in them, then it just encourages me to finish the rest of this drawing. So the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to la add in some shading lines for my horse. So with my really light pencil, I'm using a 2B, I'm just going to go very lightly. I am barely going to make any pressure on this pencil. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw any kind of shadow lines that there are. I don't know if you can even see that. It's so light. And I'm really I'm going looking at our reference photos and really determining where my light source is and just drawing those shadows in. Remember, when you use your shadows, shadows will push things back or highlights will pop things forward. So things that you want to stand out, like this little the eye ridge part, I'm going to put a shadow behind it to kind of pop it up a little bit. I'm also going to put a little shadow behind this ear to pop this ear forward and maybe just a very light one on that ear as well. I want to push this part of the horse back a little bit, so I'm going to put a little shadow behind that, just a little bit, to kind of push that in. Do the same thing right over here, and kind of come down on the horse a little bit, just to add a little bit of shadow there. The reason I, I kind of will sometimes just draw these shapes out first is it kind of lets me see before I lay a whole bu bunch of lead in if it's going to work. So once I have them in, I'm just going to take my pencil on the side of it, not on the top, I'm going to lay it on the side, and I'm just going to begin to sketch in and just rub in a little bit of shadow.
So I'll place those shadows in. You can already see a huge difference in this drawing. You can see that the head is really becoming defined. And that's what we're looking for. So as you got those, those colors in there, then you can begin to blend them out. Now you can either use a blending stick, which is a tight rolled piece of paper, or you can use your finger, or you can blend just by using the pressure of your pencil. And a lot of artists um, do that. They will just, they won't do any kind of blending with their finger. And that's awesome. I do a little bit of everything. I, I'm not stuck to just one way. I try all things, which I say that's awesome to do that. I think it's awesome to try all sorts of different techniques. A lot of artists will say, this is the only way you can do it. If you don't hold your pencil like this, you're not a real artist. And that's where a lot of people get frustrated with art because people try to force a certain method of drawing or painting or sculpting on them and saying that this is the only way they, that you can do this. And if you don't do it this way, then you're not a real artist. And that's not true. I see some people that draw amazing pictures, but they draw it totally different than the way I do it. And it doesn't make them any less of an artist. Um, art is just creating and having fun and then allowing other people to enjoy your work as well. So if an artist teaches something that's different from the way you are, give it a try. Practice it out, not just one time, but a couple of different times to see maybe if there is something to that. I've learned a lot by just kind of persevering through and and figuring out things the way that other artists do them. And some things work for me and other things I'm like, yeah, okay, you can you can do that. I'm, I'm gonna do my own thing. But give it a try and, and see if it works. And if not, just keep on doing whatever works best for you. If you enjoy what you are drawing and what you are creating, then that's all that matters. All right, so I'm kind of darkening in the the shapes of, of the nostrils for the horse, which to me kind of look like, like sixes. Like this is like a six here and this one's like a backward six. They kind of have that kind of shape to start off with and depending on how they flare their nostrils, it's, it'll be a little bit different. But that, that's what it kind of looks like to me, it's like, like a little bit of a six. So for my horse, I want it to be mainly a very light colored horse, either a, a light cream horse or even a white horse. But I want to add a little bit of of brown or gray to the muzzle here. And so I'm going to just take my side of my pencil, just like I have it with my shading, and I'm going to start etching that in. And you'll see that I'm not just going up and down, I'm going in all different directions, and even like little circles. And that's just so that I won't have kind of a, a texture lines going in one direction. Kind of like I have right here, I have some really strong texture lines going this way. Um, I don't want that here, so I want, I want kind of a, kind of the bumpiness that they have on their muzzle. And he's looking kind of weird because I haven't given him a mane or a forelock. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and very lightly, as I always do, sketch in just the shape of how I want the mane to look. Now in some of my reference photos, there's lots of different types of manes. There's, you know, bushy ones. There's really short ones. There's ones that split in the middle and go side to side. Um, so just Pick which one you want. That's why usually when I'm drawing, I don't use just one specific photo. I've had a lot of people say, can you put the photo that you're drawing from in, in there? But I really don't use just one photo. I use tons of different photos and, and my own ideas. So really this one doesn't look exactly like what I'm drawing. It's my own creation. I use reference photos for just that, just to reference how some things work. And so as I'm drawing it, I'm just gonna kind of create my own or go off an idea that I've had, or take you know, something from one horse and leave it, leave another thing from another. So this one's kind of having like a nice wavy kind of curly mane. It's gonna kind of come down a little bit. So I'm not drawing every single hair. I'm more drawing the individual mass shape and then just bringing down some tendrils. So there I have my horse mane, have a little bit of a split going off that side and then coming down. Okay, I'm going to kind of fix up my ears a little bit. Keep that nice little pointing tip there to the top. And unless they are really, you know, show horses and have the grooming treatments all the time, horses have really fuzzy ears inside. And so to get that kind of texture, you're just going to kind of run your pencil up and down on the inside. 
just a little bit just to kind of give that indication of some of some fuzz in there just keep it keep it irregular a little bit not all the same length and kind of just darken nicely towards the center and you could really add a little bit of shadowing behind your forelock there and it's really going to kind of pop that out just a bit okay and then I'm going to go ahead and put in my lines for my actual mane here and the mane's going to kind of come down right over the shoulder of this horse and because I have kind of this little crimping at the bottom, as I get to the bottom of the mane, I'm going to actually do that with my mane. I'm just going to kind of swiggle my pencil out just a little bit. It's going to give me that impression of just kind of a squiggly little mane having the same kind of crimped. Like the weight of the mane keeps it tight this way, and then as it gets down less weight, then it starts to kind of get that wave to it a little bit. So now we want to add a little bit of shading. I'm going to take my eraser, I'm going to erase some of the, the shading that I already did on the neck here so that my mane will pop out a little bit. And kind of really get that, that line, not super dark, just a little bit of a shadowing line that I can go up underneath there and shade in there. Now once you get to this point, um, you could really call this, you know, getting to be a completed picture. Um, or you can just continue to add, you know, more and more and more and more detail. A fun thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add in a little bit of shaded background. And because I want this to be a lighter colored horse, with the shaded background, it's going to pop this horse forward. Okay, so I added in my lead, but you can see it has some really strong stroke marks. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm just going to start working it. I'm going to work the lead around and kind of smooth it out a little bit. Then I'll go back over with my pencil and just finish up kind of smoothing out those lines. Now you want to be careful after working this much lead that if you have lead on your fingers that you're not touching the rest of your picture until you get it cleaned off. And you can either use a baby wipe or wash your hands. Ooh. Shocking. Or you can use your gum eraser and just kind of clean off your fingers that way. It does a pretty good job. Alright, so I've worked this picture out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it. I might go back and add a few more finishing touches. Cool, I'm going to sign my name and call this a finished picture. Thank you guys so much for drawing with me today and I look forward to drawing with you again in one of my other videos. So check some of those out and until then keep drawing. God bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.